We begin, of course, with the royal wedding, words that have set hearts aflutter all across the globe. And now the royal couple is telling all. Well, they're telling a little bit. <laughs> wedding bells will be ringing in the spring for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The two gave their first interview as an engaged couple and shared some of their love story and their plans for the future. It's the stuff of fairy tales, from California girl to fiancé of a prince, and soon to be member of the British royal family. Prince Harry and his future bride, Meghan Markle, have made their engagement public. They gave their first interview together and allowed us a glimpse into the romance that's captivating royal watchers and romantics worldwide. The meeting on a blind date. I'd never heard of Meghan before, mm -hmm. and I was beautifully surprised when I, when I walked into that room and saw her. and. There she was sitting there, I was like, okay, well, I really have to up, up, up my game here. <laughs> and then I'd sit down and, have a, and make sure I've got a good chat. Anything I learned about him and his family was what he would share with me and vice versa. So for both of us, it was just a really authentic and organic way to get to know each other. The ring, the center diamond, is from Botswana, a special vacation spot for the couple. We camped out with each other under the stars. We spent come and join me for five days out there, which was absolutely fantastic. And the two stones on each side? And the little diamonds either side are for my mother's jewelry collection to make sure that she's with us on this on this crazy journey together. In many ways, the engagement was handled in typical royal fashion. A formal announcement followed by the couple posing for pictures. Similar to Prince William and Kate, and Williams and Harry's parents, Prince Charles and Diana. But that's where the typical ends with Meghan Markle. Will you marry me? Yes. First of all, she's an actress, having held a prominent role on the drama Suits on NBC sister network USA. She's divorced, and she's from this side of the pond. It's not the first time a royal fell in love with a divorced American, but that first time altered British history. King Edward VIII fell in love with twice-divorced American socialite Wallace Simpson. The British government refused to let them marry. Edward wound up giving up the throne to be with Simpson in 1937. His brother George VI, Harry's great-grandfather, was then crowned king. But now there seems to be nothing but celebration surrounding this union. It was just a choice, right? I think that very early on when we realized we were going to commit to each other, that we knew we had to invest the time and the energy and whatever it took to make that happen. The fact that I fell in love with Megan so incredibly quickly was a sort of confirmation to me that all the stars were aligned, everything was just perfect. Oh! <laughs> right? Joining me now here in studio is royal expert Victoria Arbiter and live from London, Sally Bedell-Smith, historian and author of the book Prince Charles, The Passions and Paradoxes of an Improbable Life. Welcome to you both. Um, I, if only Thank I you. had known that the royal, the royal family was into divorced Americans, I would have, <laughs> I would have tried harder earlier in my career. Okay, <laughs> let me start with you, Victoria, on your impressions of that joint interview. Uh, a couple of things really struck me. First of all, was just the intimacy between the two. They were staring at each other like lovesick puppies, and that was just charming to see because I think Harry has really worn his heart on his sleeve. He's been so vocal this year about the grief he suffered following the loss of his mother. So to see him so madly in love is wonderful. But what really struck me about Meghan was her tremendous confidence. There were a couple of moments where she didn't shut him down, but she overlapped. She certainly wasn't deferring to him. Mm -hmm. She was no shrinking violet, but really it was the fact that they came across on equal footing. They're definitely a team, and I think they're going to be a formidable team moving forward. Sally, what do you make of it? What do you make of it? Is she going to be a, a princess or what or what? Well, I doubt she'll be a princess because she would have to take the name Princess Henry, which I don't think she would want. Uh, she's a very strong woman. She's had a whole professional career. Uh, the word is that they may be called the, um, the Duke and, and Duchess of Suffolk, which would be a nice, dignified name for them and uh, one that I think she could live with. But I, I couldn't see her as Princess Henry somehow. Mm -hmm. why, why does she have to be Princess Henry? She's not a princess in her own that's right. That's just the way. That's just the way it's done over here. I, I think I would. I think I would just suck it up. Don't you think you just suck it up? Like it's fine. I go with Henry. I, I can live with that. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, Victoria. The one thing you said stood out to you in watching this was Meghan Markle's 36. Yeah. Her age. Explain why that's significant. The reason that's significant. She's the age now that Diana was when she died. 
um, and that I mean, I get goosebumps even Me saying too. it. It's it's chilling to think about what Diana accomplished in her very yeah. short life, but I'm sure it's not lost on Harry either because you suddenly realise how incredibly young that is. Um, and so Meghan is entering the royal family at the age Diana was when she left it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Harry has already committed himself to continuing Diana's legacy, his work with AIDS and HIV. He's continuing her work on behalf of the Halo Trust, which oversees landmines. Um, he's making sure that his mother's message continues. Mm -hmm. And Sally, how do the Brits feel about adding an American to the royal family? I think they're very pleased. I mean, the, there's the degree to which uh, America has been integrated into British cul culture in the past, say, 30 years is pretty remarkable. There are an awful lot of Anglo-American uh, marriages. Um, even within the royal family, Prince Charles has been to America 20 times. He has American advisors, American benefactors. He has taken inspiration from American um, projects. Uh, the Queen has an American lady-in-waiting. Um, she's taken her only private holidays uh, in Kentucky and Wyoming. And so I think they're extremely comfortable with, uh, with Americans. Mm -hmm. Remember how, uh, what affinity the uh, royal family had with the Obamas. So I, I don't think the prospect of an American entering their family is uh, is is anywhere near what it was. I mean, it's 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 a total opposite, really, to what it was when Wallace Simpson right. uh, hoved into view. And it's a different story. what a different woman she was. I got to go, yeah. but I got to ask you, Victoria, before we go about the coat that she was wearing, which is sold out. It's by Line the Label. She's a fashion icon like that, right? Like, like that. that. She crushed the website, so obviously they weren't prepared. She has a lot of famous designer friends, so I think everyone's going to be clamoring to send her items mm -hmm. now. They're already calling that coat the Megan, <laughs> which I approve of yeah. entirely. <laughs> Great to see you both. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.